Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to the Red Street. Put your hands together, your host, Nick Hill. You could keep applauding until I actually get to the microphone. That would be my... Yeah, keep going, man, keep going. Is that it? Is that the best we're going to get tonight? Clearly it is. Let me just take this in. Um, there's a lot of women in here tonight. I, I've noticed when you come... Just, just gentlemen. I'll call you gentlemen. Um, so there's probably nobody from Matson in. So just, <laughs> gentlemen, just give me a cheer. Yeah. Okay. Ladies, give me a cheer. Yeah. Prosecco fueled already. Clearly. <laughs> That's what's happening here. Are we all well? Yeah. Good. You might find the questions get a little bit harder as the evening progresses, but do your best to keep up. So, um, just just by a show of hands, who's been to this gig before? All right, okay. And a show of hands, who's never been? You have. Right, so for the people that haven't been, because this is about the sixth gig, and it's, it's only a bit of tradition, um, just to make you feel welcome, one by one, you just stand up, introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to the guy, Rob. <laughs> Rob, have you been to this gig before? Yeah. No, no. 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 So that's Rob, everyone. <laughs> that didn't take long, did it? Um, who else was new? Have you got any new people? Those two. Did you see the way she just pointed the pointed you out straight away? Drop you, drop you right in it. So what, what's your name, young lady? No, not you. No, I'm not looking at you, am I? You've been before. What's your name? Danny. Danny. Brilliant. Where are you from, Danny? Gloucester, let's narrow it down a little bit. <laughs> Linden. Oh, mm, what's our views on Linden, people? Oh, have we got okay? <laughs> have we got people lower down the evolutionary scale in tonight? <laughs> Treadworth. Treadworth. <laughs> oh, this has gone downhill rapidly, isn't it? We've got Treadworth now. Top. So, so, okay. Anybody less than Treadworth? Have we got any White City people in? <laughs> no. So I'm from Gloucester, I'm born and bred in Gloucester, and I lived in White City for a while, so I can say these things. So Treadworth, so you two are probably the roughest in here tonight. <laughs> That's what's happening here, isn't it? You're very welcome anyway. Thank you very much. Very welcome. <laughs> I think I'm going to be fucking battered later on. I think that was that. Was that really wrong. Oh, right. Okay. So the plot thickens. Where are you really from? Bristol. You said that under your breath, didn't you? Have we got any other Bristol people in? Listen to that. People in Gloucester don't even know where Bristol is. Give them a clue. You don't sound Bristolian. Whereabouts to, is she, she? Whereabouts in Bristol from? Um, Whitchurch. Well, Whitchurch is quite posh, isn't it? Yeah. If you said Noel West or something like that, yeah. then that's a real shit hole, yeah. isn't it? That's, <laughs> that's right. Anyway, listen, if you haven't been to this gig before, um, let me just tell you the format of the night. We've got three brilliant acts on for you this evening. We'll have your first act on shortly, then we'll have a break, and then your middle act, then another break, and then your headline act. And we should be done by 10 o'clock, and then I think we've got a coach coming um, for a jaunt up to Berkeley. Um, so <laughs> I'm not saying that some of you look like doggers. Um, do, you, do you have dogging in Bristol? No. Of course you do. I've got I've got a, I've got a bit of a confession to make. I'm a, I'm a bit um, I'm a bit shell shocked tonight. I've got to be honest. I'm, I'm struggling because it was uh, my, my 24th anniversary yesterday and um, wedding anniversary that is not my fucking coming out of prison or anything like that <laughs> it, yeah 24 years that's that's a long time for me because historically if I lasted 24 weeks it was a miracle and um, it's a special treat right we didn't go to Miller and Carge and spend 75 pound on a steak Straight to Tesco's, 4 99 rum and a bottle of Prosecco for 7 99 Absolutely. Because no, we're pensioned, so that's... 
I've got to be honest, when I wrote that little bit materially earlier, well, I thought it would go down far better, but fuck it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was quite pleased with that this afternoon. <laughs> Sod yeah, I couldn't remember. And, and as a special treat, we didn't go out and celebrate anything. No, I've, uh, I've done one better than that. I've allowed her to come this evening. Um, <laughs> and she sat over there in the corner, if anybody... <laughs> If anybody wants to go and put their arm round her and tell her it's still not too late um, <laughs> to put right that mistake she made 24, 24 years ago. Where the fuck did I go wrong? <laughs> so, what's been happening since we did this last gig? I think it was April when we did the last gig. Um, yeah, I think it was. It was April time. Strictly's back. Are we all? Yeah. Are we all fans of Strictly? Yeah. Nobody. Got a few Strictly fans. Oh, come on, you must watch Strictly. I, love, I never used to like it, but I love Strictly. I mean, the, the fact that BBC have got on board with this disabled thing, I think it's absolutely brilliant. Because we had Ellie Simmons a couple of years ago, the Paralympian. I mean, she was she was brilliant. Wasn't she? she was fantastic. And then on this current series, we've got um, the deaf girl out of Love Island, who, who apparently she she can't really hear, but she can only she can lip read. But how that helps her dancing is beyond me. She's Fantastic. And then there's Chris McCall's in the blind guy. I mean, he's, he's absolutely brilliant. But I think the BBC have shot themselves in the foot because they've raised the bar for disablement so high. I'm thinking, what are they going to do next year to top that? And I was thinking, if only Stephen Hawking was still alive. <laughs> <laughs> now again, I only wrote that and I wasn't sure how that would go down. That's not... I'm quite happy with that. I'm, I'm quite pleased with that reaction. That's, gonna, that's definitely going to stay in. But there's been controversy in Strictly already, hasn't there, with Wynne and Katia and the Woke Brigade jumping on board just because he had his hand on her hip and all the keyboard warriors were pounding away saying this is an outrage to women and totally offending everything else. And, and what I'd like to say is if, if you're offended by anything that I might say tonight or any of the acts might say tonight, if you're offended by anything like that, then fucking grow up. <laughs> to be honest. Because I couldn't give a shit. I really, I really couldn't. So the other thing that's happened since we last met is we've obviously had a new government. Um, I'm not keen on that. Uh, no, he's cut the winter fuel allowance. That's, that was a bit of a, a, a wake-up call. But on the plus side, in August, I got my free bus pass. So. <laughs> From now until February, we're going to be living on the buses, um, <laughs> travelling the county. And it's, it's got to be a double decker, obviously, because we can go on the top deck, because all those old fuckers will still be downstairs, they won't be able to make their way upstairs. <laughs> Again, I thought that might go down a bit better. <laughs> Take it or leave it. And people are saying, secure, you know, he's. He's, he's a bit of a bully, and, and what he's done is immoral. But I, I think I think everyone's missing the point because I mean I'm not a big I didn't vote Labour. I'm, I'm not going to tell you what I voted for. I'm not a big Keir fan, but I think what he's done by cutting the winter fuel allowance, he's looking at the bigger picture in the UK, right? And I'll share this bit of information. You can Google it later because in the UK currently we are about one and a half million homes short, right? There's about one and a half pe million people who haven't got homes to live in. Now, there's three million 65-year-olds who were single, still living in their own home, who would have been entitled to the winter fuel allowance. So what he's done by cutting it is he's hoping that if only 36.7% of those get hypothermia and die, <laughs> that's gonna free up a fucking lot of homes, isn't it? And that's a win-win, that is it. And again, when I wrote that, I thought that would go down um, far better, but there's probably a lot of Labour supporters in the room, so... Now, I don't think there's much else I've got to tell you at this stage, apart from the fact I'm really pleased with the acts we've got tonight, because I've gigged with all of them, and they're, and they're great, they're lovely, and I know you're going to enjoy them. Um, the only thing I would ask is, whilst the acts are on, um, don't go and try and get a drink. There'll be plenty of time in the breaks. If you need the loo, yeah, there is only one, but... Hold it in. Um, <laughs> just, 
just looking around the room, there's only a few old people, so we should be all right. Oh, started. <laughs> right, what we're doing is all fuck off outside. <laughs> Turn the lights off. So listen, I know I've whipped you up into a hyper comedic frenzy. Are you ready for your first act of the evening? Yeah. Known, I don't know how long I've known this young man, but he's great, I love him. Um, his name is John Wagstaff. On the count of three, if we can start the applause at the back of the room, bring it all the way through, down to the end, and welcome to the stage. One, two, three, start the clapping! All the way round!